Shumai, and welcome to another Phil and Yai on. Yes, indeed. And um, Yai, <clears throat> do you remember the first time you... Um, um, you uh, had a drink? No, no, no. Do you remember the first time you... Um, oh, saw uh, the sea. No, what I mean is, do you remember the first time you... Um, You're not going to be uh, rude now, are you, Phil? Me? Rude? No, now <laughs> listen. Do you remember the first time you did... Hey, don't mention a name. Yayan, do you remember the first time you did Shakespeare? Do I remember? <laughs> do I remember? No. Yayan? Well, of course I remember, man. It was the Merry Wives of Windsor, Ludlow Shakespeare Festival 2002. Directed by the renowned theatre director Michael Bogdanov. Yeah, I remember him phoning me and asking me or, or telling me, I want you to play Slender because you're not. Yeah, well, how could I refuse the great man? And I was to play Sir Hugh Evans, the Welsh vicar. All you were parts of Welsh, Phil. But anyway, it all started in Aberdeer. The Coliseum. No, I was about to say Aberdeer House, our rehearsal room down in Cardiff Bay. Great script, great director, and lots of out work actors. The late Dorian Thomas, famous, of course, for Twin Town, one hell of a character and a great actor. I asked Dorian why he liked working with Bogdanov. Just say why you like working with Michael Bogdanov. Because he keeps using me. <laughs> Go on, oh, we're off, we're off, yes. My name is Johnny Nev, yes. <laughs> Ah, Johnny, Johnny Nevitt, yes, indeed. Famous for, um, famous for, uh, famous for... Pobola Cum. Yes, Pobola Cum. Oh, and the lovely Ray Llewellyn. I play just as shallow. You can see that by my silly hat. I love working with Michael Bogdan, because we go back a long way. 1965 in Dublin, was our first production. And he knows about Shakespeare, and I love Shakespeare. So, marriage of true minds. Diane. Go. Hello, my name is Peter Bogdanovich, and I like working with Michael Bogdanov because. <laughs> yeah, because he was Michael Bogdanov. Anyway, rehearsals were underway, and Michael Bogdanov was taking things very seriously. I'm sort of saying I hear the French is very good. To go with the archive, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what is the problem at the moment? Uh, the problem is that uh, I actually got the sword movie. stuck up my nose and I'm now <laughs> hurt. <laughs> Not only did we have to learn lines... Yeah, which was like learning a totally new language. But fencing as well. The only fencing I'd ever done was the nice wooden one I'd put up in the back garden. <laughs> Cue the fighting. After a few weeks rehearsing down in Cardiff Bay, we all went en masse to Ludlow Castle. You know, the castle was built between 1066 and 1085. Oh, yeah. Then they had a nice cup of tea at 11.30. Phil, will you stop winding me up? Sorry, I... <coughs> We all arrived en masse at the market town of Ludlow and made our way to the castle keep. 
There we met up with Sean Carlson, Brendan Charlson, Adrian O'Sullivan, Morgan Rees, and the ever so funny Eve Miles. What's going on here then? Well, we were just looking at it. We were wondering, who's this fruit? <laughs> who's this minter up here? Oh. Your reputation will be all around town. Look at me, looking so humble. Fairy. Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. Good morning. The Merry Wives of Windsor. First day. How sandwiches and pop. <laughs> we're excited. <laughs> 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 Tell me, Phil, what were your first impressions when we walked into the castle door? Well, a uh, little bit of Tommy Cooper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just like that. Uh -huh. Mind you, I thought they'd let it go a bit. And they applied for a grant. Good morning. First impressions? First impressions. This is my impression of Phil Harris. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was nothing like me. Behind the scenes, it was like a maze. Yeah, I got lost three times. My understudy had to go on. This is one of the dressing rooms behind the stage of the Ludlow Festival. We're now in the car. This is Jonathan oh, Nevin. That is Batman. Or as we call him these days, Johnny Two Jobs. <laughs> Johnny Three Jobs or Four Jobs. I've never actually performed here, but I performed this somewhere very similar, yes. <laughs> so if you come with me now, we'll go around. As I said, this is the dressing room area. Two dressing rooms there. Another two here. Final rehearsals with the late, great Philip Maddock giving us his fall staff. Famous people called in to watch rehearsals. From BBC Two, there was one man and his dog. And even Humpty Dumpty called in before his big fall. And yay, you discovered during rehearsals that the set was too high for you. Yeah, I have a fear of heights. Did you have vertigo? No, only over to stage left. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? I don't do heights. What? Heights. You've got to go up there? Yes, but I'm not. And how high is it? It's so, becoming just, just show us how high. You're not reacting now. You're still on the That's all. <laughs> yeah. You see? It's not yeah, very high at all. Nothing, yeah. nothing. Yeah. A bit of calm breathing. What do you saw that? Deep breathing. Just breathing. Think, think ninja. Well, there you go. Thank you, Russell Goma. If only I thought ninja. Whatever that was. Anyway, the following night. Hundreds of people turned up in the castle to have their little picnics before enjoying the production. If you go down after yonder woods, you should... Phil, what were you doing? Well, I'm singing a Shakespearean teddy bear's picnic. It was far from a teddy bear's picnic. You know, you had cucumber sandwiches, smoked salmon, champagne. 
It was like trucking him. Life is good. What's going on? Uh, what's going on out here, out there in the uh, main circle, or whatever? Uh, there is a sort of gathering of um, of, the, of the great, good, and really quite wealthy, marvelously turned out, and they're all having their picnics to the sound of the Malvern Hills Brass Band. Meanwhile, backstage, we were all getting ready. Michael Bogdanov looking very dapper. Yeah, and Johnny Neville looking like an old dap. Right. There we are. Now then, lads. <laughs> this is what I used to look like in my youth. <laughs> Before I got fat and prosperous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 Mr. 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 Howard, I'm very well at the moment. I thought I'd come on stage, um, Mr. Harris. How are you? Very, very well. Good. Uh, very well. A bit nervous, but I think we'll enjoy it. Excellent. Nice. I was hoping. Right, let's see one there. Okay. okay. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Bill. My girl. This morning. These clubs. Who's the best? This morning. Uh, Yian is tonight. Uh. <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed. Anyway, it was all so exciting and everybody so nervous. Ready for curtain up? Uh, Phil, open air theatre. There's no curtains. Yeah, you know what I mean. Beginners to stage, please. Here we go then. Another opening, another show. Oh, you're so show busy, eh? Cue Dorian and the penny whistle.
Right, and then the play began. It, hang on now, right? It was a three-hour production. I haven't got time to watch it all. You know, I've got two box sets of Killing Eve to watch and a lawn to mow. OK, let's see then. Uh, the end of Act One, where Falstaff, played by Philip Maddock, is thrown into the Thames by Pistol and Nim, looked on by a not-so-slender slender. And then the whole play in less than one and a half minutes. And after the show, what do actors do? Home to bed with a nice cup of cocoa and a slice of toast. As if it's party time! What's going on here, Johnny? Yeah, we're just debating you know, the uh, ins and outs of the uh, production. That and, might be as well, but what are you doing here? Yeah, well, I... Where are we? What are you doing? Yes, discussing the ins and outs of the uh, production. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, well, we've been invited tonight to meet the... Uh, the friends of the festival, or something like that. So they've put on this lovely spread, as you can see. We've got uh, olives and pippins for uh, supper. It's, it's, it's very nice. It's very nice, and we're mingling. But as you can, uh, as you can also see, there are no people from the festival committee on our table because they won't mingle with us. We're also, also, we're also discussing the uh, what? ins and outs of the production. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what he plays in, in the play. I think he's one of the extras. Also, the outs and ins of the production. I'm going over here now. Thank you. Pippins and cheese to come. But every theatre company has to have a social secretary. And Dorian was ours. And fair play, he found the only pub in Ludlow that would stay open late for a slot to unwind. Yeah. 
right? How's it going? It took me between 15 and 20 minutes to charm these people into allowing us all to come in. I got 20 yeses now by tomorrow night. <laughs> After our bus learn, late license, grey area in the law, uh, and pub nosh, including chili cock party. Um, what do you Rack? Lamb chartreuse sauce? Does that make sense? Yeah. Can we add that? There we are, you're the epicure. Um, and I like, nearly said hedonist, but I meant epicure. Um, um, oh, all sorts, lovely. And curries and mm, steaks and. Yeah. And beer! Oh, it's not that. Beer! <laughs> this is my puppy no. Strange. A gang of Welsh actors in an English pub singing Irish songs. Cho yo. <laughs> Show. Yeah, well, that was our job, Phil. But it was pouring with rain, man, and I had a birthday to celebrate. 21 again? Uh, 41, to be exact. <laughs> I was nearly five years ago now, remember? <laughs> I don't remember much about your birthday, but I do remember the rain. A um, little bit of rain, a bit of a disaster. We'll see how we get on until we get to the interval, and I'm offering everyone beautiful, attractive Max in either blue or yellow. OK, bye-bye. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you anyway, but I... Secrets are secrets, you see. We take with us to the grave. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to be in the rain. I want to be in Hollywood. Oh, shame. I can't stand the rain on my window. Or whatever it is. Brings back sweet memories. I can't stand the rain Gets my window hole Cause you're not here with me Even though it was open air, the show must go on.
we all dried off and we ran to the pub to celebrate your birthday. Yes, it was just a quiet little gathering. Tonight. <laughs> Somebody stole my chin. Great disappointment because I've just heard that many of my co actors spent last night in the Blue Ball. I would have expected more of them. That's my first impression. The castle's good though. Uh, Mr. Maddock, it wasn't the Blue Ball, it was the Rose and Crown. Is that the reason he wasn't there? No, he stayed away because he didn't like the idea. What, of celebrating your birthday? No. <laughs> of buying around. <laughs> Aye, that's true. But you know what he loved? He loved when we were invited round to uh, the kind people of Ludlow's houses for lunch. Philip loved best was to hold court and tell us all about his stories when he played uh, the voice of Hitler in a feature film and of course about that very famous episode of Dad's Army. Any time that somebody says something that I don't like I take up my little book and then so Mannering says what are you doing? I said I'm making a list for when we win the war. And he says, you're not going to win the war. Yes, you are. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, you are. <laughs> so that goes on. And then finally, um, 
a pike is obstreperous at the top of the ladder. He starts singing, Hitler is, is a twerp. twerp. Yes. <laughs> and then I say, your, your name will also go on the list. What is it? And he says, don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> yeah. You see. And that has gone down now, voted last year, the funniest <laughs> moment in television history. Amazing, yeah. yes. In, in comedy uh, department in, Brook, in, uh, in Bush House, London, you know. Worked for them in Germany. Read the newsreels for, for the mm. Germany. And um, uh, I, they then were doing a film, an aspect, a full film on, but it's kind of documentary on Hitler. And um, they had got these film shots like he's doing now, but no dialogue, of course, up in the Eagle's Nest, his home, you know. Mm. And lots of uh, scenes there that they had, but they had no idea really what he was talking about with his girlfriend, with the ministers who came up, you know, children up there. But they had an idea that it could have been about this, and somebody wrote dialogue for him and them. So whenever he spoke, I spoke for him. I, I was his voice. Apparently, when his voice was relaxed, and he wasn't screaming, it sounded uh, vaguely like mine then, anyway. And um, it, this is how he did it, you see. Um, and then it went out and was reviewed. So, but it wasn't a f film, it wasn't a feature film, it was a documentary. But when they came to these areas, I remember one of the main newspapers wrote, he says, and they said, uh, they thought it was a very good film, but he said, the actual thing, which was a tremendous success, was the fact they got Hitler's voice on tape. And uh, I thought, well, that's not bad, is it? Because they were convinced, they just thought that was Hitler. Good heavens. And it was me fit, putting in dialogue that somebody else had written, imagining that could have been what they were talking about at the time. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's the same thing for him, you know. All in all, it was a great experience. Yeah, and after our very first venture into the world of Shakespeare, we did a few others after that. Yeah, thanks to Michael Bogdanov. Yeah. Well, Phil, are you ready for the curtain call? I thought you said there weren't any curtains. Never mind. All's well that ends well. Yeah, it was much ado about nothing, really. Yeah, right, old comedy of errors. <laughs> hey, Phil, what about my Coriolanus? Oh, well, I got a cream you can have for that. <laughs> Say so long, Phil. So long, Phil. Topsy. You don't know where this ends up by that. I'm telling you now. Thank you. Nobody knows. Yeah. Just yeah.